with Bill Doyle on, on, and Sophie on Vermont issues, and with Mayor Watson. And congratulations on your win. Oh, thank you. Win. I know, thank we you. all know you'd win. You would. <laughs> and uh, you're doing very well as, on the, as the mayor. Well, thank you very much. And speaking of that, a lot's going on in the uh, city of Montpelier, so let's start with that. Sure. Uh, so we uh, recently completed our the goals for the year um, and our, our strategic outcomes, and uh, we are just so excited to be starting to work on some of this stuff. Let's, let's talk about some of the goals. Okay, so, uh, I mean, as uh, has been a goal um, for, for many years, uh, we are looking to add more housing to the city. We know that there is a need for housing at all levels um, from affordable to market rate. And so uh, with the new zoning that recently passed, uh, that seems like that would uh, clear the way for um, some uh, new uh, and what we feel would be appropriate development for the city. So we're really excited about that. Um, and uh, in addition, oh, I mean, we have a, a net zero energy goal for the city. Um, for the for the municipality, um, you know, for the city operations, but as well as for the community uh, as well. So we are continuing to make progress there. That's um, uh, that that's always something that I'm I'm very interested in. Um, and uh, you know, uh, that we have some other other goals as well. We have a newly formed um, uh, equity uh, or equality uh, committee, social justice uh, committee. Uh, which is going to be looking at um, some issues uh, around social justice with the city, which I'm, I'm really excited uh, that they're going to be taking on. Um, and but, but more generally, we're going to be starting to track more data f about the city. So, um, you know, we can have a, a really clear picture as to how the city is doing. Uh, so, you know, in terms of, uh, of jobs or population or uh, you know, a percent of vacancy rate for our, our uh, rental market or uh, those kinds of things. So some, some population level data that we're going to start to um, keep track of as a city. And then um, we're going to be looking at, um, yeah, what kind of performance indicators can we use um, with the city as well. So pretty excited about all of that. I could talk about any one of those things for a long time, um, but those are... Those are some, some new things going on with us. Are you surprised about any of the information surprise, surprise you? Well, I think, um, uh, I mean, one of the things that I uh, was surprised about uh, this last year, uh, I, I think it was probably about a year ago, our, our police chief came to us. He was there for another reason, and, and he happened to mention that crime in the city was down 11%, which... That was, that's great. That's great news. Um, and I, I was very interested um, to see, like, how does that fit in the larger trend? You know, how does that fit? Um, you know, what's, what's the trend doing over time for the city of Montpelier? And how does that compare to Vermont? And how does that compare to, the, to, to Washington County or to, to the nation? Uh, so that's the kind of data that I'm, uh, I'm really interested in. Uh, what are you, what uh, are you looking for in the next 10 years? Oh, goodness. Over the next 10 years... Uh, well, I would like us to make um, subst substantial um, progress towards um, sustainability. I am so passionate about Montpelier being a sustainable community. Uh, and so that means uh, that the city needs to make some um, significant steps towards that uh, because that's what we have control over, right? Th this is, these are our systems, mm -hmm. uh, so we really need to... Uh, um, be ourselves net zero. So, and I, I think there's a lot of opportunity there. I mean, one of our priorities this year was um, prioritizing non-fossil fuel vehicles. So, you know, everything from uh, lawn mowers to uh, police cruisers, uh, you know, we want to look at what are the options for us that don't involve fossil fuels. Um, or, uh, you know, if we can be incorporating more biodiesel uh, into our, um, our fleets that would be great too. So there's a lot of options out there. Um, so that's one thing. Um, but then in two, I think, um, you know, looking at Montpelier as a part of a whole, you know, we are just one piece of Washington County. I think if we want to prevent um, really sprawl from happening, if we would like, uh, you know, places that are open landscapes now around us to continue to be open landscapes, then we really need to be developing in Montpelier. 
<clears throat> and so uh, I would like to see um, the, the number of housing units uh, increase. Uh, I think that also has implications for our population. Um, uh, I think there's there's this um, popular myth uh, that uh, Vermont in general is losing uh, uh, its young people. And there was a great uh, podcast from Brave Little State uh, recently that I'd recommend to anybody. Um, Where can that, we get it? Uh, so you can get that. I mean, it's put out by VPR. Um, and uh, I mean, I, I think you can subscribe to it as a podcast, so it's, or you can listen to it online. Um, but uh, they, they go into some of the, the census data and look at um, you know, what the populations are doing. And yeah, we don't have a lot of the people in their 20s, but um, the population of people in their 30s and 40s and, and other, other um, uh, age groups are in fact increasing. So that I found very encouraging. And I think, um, you know, I, think that I want that to be true for us as well in, in terms of uh, growing our, our population and, and the, the demographics, in, in all demographics really here. So, and, and really I want to communicate that, Verm like not just Vermont, but Montpelier is, is a place where there is a lot of opportunity. I mean, we're, we have a lot of jobs and uh, it's a great place to live. So we want to get that word out. Well, it certainly is a great place to live. Oh my gosh, it's so great. Healthy. Well, I like the net zero conversation and yeah. I'm wondering what parts of that you guys have been working on or what part of it is working like sure. does GMTA have buses that are you know non-emission yeah so uh, I know they are working on um, uh, a grant to get some uh, electric buses which is great yeah. um, uh, hopeful that that will come through uh, I know the GMTA is also looking at uh, rejiggering their route um, and there's conversation about trying to coordinate with uh, the schools so that oh. uh, it might be convenient for both school kids and um, uh, you know the public to uh, to be riding the bus. So we'll see what that looks like. I mean, I think there's a lot of questions around that, but uh, I'm pretty hopeful. I uh, remember when I was a kid, it was like a big no-no that even teachers rode this kids' oh, school bus. Oh, really? Yeah, because. Um, Tom, the head of the library over here, uh -huh. he was a teacher at U32 when I oh, was there. Oh, really? And I remember him getting on the bus yeah. once. Oh, how'd that go? It was caught. Everybody gave him the hairy eyeball. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was from, like, from the kids, or I think the bus driver. Oh, from the bus driver. Like oh, it wasn't uh, something that was done. Oh, interesting. And so I'm wondering, you know, to hear you say that is yeah. like. Yay! We're gonna have you know <laughs> public transit or yeah something similar. Sure, right? That's I mean, legitimate uh, and safe and safe, right? Like uh, arguably, uh, um, potentially safer than you know current. Uh, well, no, it's I mean we have safe safe busing now, but mm -hmm. these buses might include uh, video cameras, which could be useful, and then. Uh, you know, just having other adults you know, on, on the bus. Run, not, not emitting carbon dioxide. Yeah, right, and, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah, so, and it would be, right, if it's better for the environment, that would be, that'd be great. So, so that's one, one thing. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was wondering about the wood chip plant. Yes. Is there some, some data that you guys have got off of that that's been interesting? So I, I don't know the, the data off of that, but it's continuing to uh, operate smoothly. We've had no um, outages of service uh, since it started. Uh, it is uh, continuing to save people. Um, it's continuing, excuse me. <laughs> Ooh, it's allergy season. Woo. Oh, um, you know, it's fine. Um, it's continuing to save uh, uh, taxpayers m money um, because per BTU, it's still cheaper than oil. Um, so that's encouraging. So people are continuing to save. That's great. Um, you know, I would love to see that uh, expanded to other uh, buildings downtown. Uh, but you know, well, there's other great technologies, and we'll, uh, you know, we want to see. Um, uh, any any kind of renewable options moving forward. So yeah. um, th th I guess I'm really speaking now about uh, heat pumps. They're they're also great. Um, so so on the French block, are they using heat pumps? Yeah, to heat and, well, those I don't know about apartments? the French block. I know on Taylor Street okay. they're going to be using heat pumps. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So heat pumps. I could talk about heat pumps for a long time too as a physics. Teacher, oh, right. I mean, I I just love that technology. That's so that's so cool. Um, 
So and do you see it working in the cold climate? I do, yeah. So I have, I mean, I know this is like talking where about you, myself a little bit, but, but I, so I have a heat pump in my house uh, okay. for space heating and one for my hot water heater. Uh, and uh, the idea is that you're using a little bit of energy, like a fan, basically, a pump, to move heat from the outside of your house to the inside of your house. So with just a little bit of electricity, you can move way more heat than what you're using. So it, effectively, it's more than 100% efficient. Right. Uh, because uh, because the heat that you're gaining is way more than the heat than the like than the uh, the energy that you were using to move using. that heat into your house. So it's just uh, it's very cool. It's very cool technology. And I mean, could the city give incentive some way for the you know, French block to incorporate those? Well, or? even beyond the French block, I'm certainly interested in thinking about how the city can be supportive of Community. efficiency, uh, energy efficiency, um, as uh, um, you know, movements as well as uh, renewable energy, uh, like fuel switches. Um, so. That's I've yet to have those conversations really with the rest of the council and see what uh, what they all think about this. But I'm very interested in figuring out how to uh, provide those incentives to uh, people who live in town. I mean, we have great uh, incentives right now for businesses, uh, you know, tax stabilization. But what are we offering in terms of uh, uh, opportunities for residents? So I'm interested in in expanding that. So this is a little extended as well, but doesn't Montpelier have two great rivers? Oh my gosh, we do. Well, so if you if you count, uh, the, I think it's like the the Blanchard Brook. We have five rivers that we're counting all five. Counting all five um, go through Montpelier. Uh, so, uh, gosh, one of the one of the goals of the city this year um, is to increase. Uh, the n number of parks in the city and the access to the parks. And we are viewing the rivers as potential park space. Um, and so how are we interfacing with the river? How are we uh, accessing uh, the river? So one of the, one of the places that's sort of a lot of interest right now is uh, right at the bluff of uh, Taylor Street, uh, that, that project. So um, right where the North Branch meets the Winooski, uh, it's uh, how do I? S it's like uh, opposite the Shaw's um, on the the Taylor Street side. But anyway, there's a little bluff right there, and as we start to develop one Taylor Street over the next couple of years, which I, has already started, by the way, so exciting to see that actually yeah, with shovels good. in the ground. So great. Um, that little bluff right there uh, has been. Um, it's it's got a lot of potential because it's it's a beautiful little spot, and uh, we're there's a, a whole sort of corner of it there that we're not really going to be doing anything with. We might seed it with grass or something, but the idea is that uh, we're going to spend a little bit more time thinking about just that corner uh, and what could be done right there, like uh, a small hydro turbine to oh run gosh. the city hall. Maybe I mean that's <laughs> one possibility, right? So I we're going to. Have a public I've process. Been to, wondering. Yeah, right. So uh, we'll have a lot of opportunity for the public to have input. We're planning on working with uh, the Vermont River Conservancy uh, to and uh, uh, some like the the um, uh, Parks Commission and the Conservation Commission to do some thinking about what should happen right there. And Avram Pat. Oh, who was that? Avram Pat was the head of Washington Electric Co-op for oh, many years. Former sure. legislator. And oh, great. He's yeah. a legislator, and he's also really made sure that Washington Electric was all sustainable. Oh, really? Oh, that's so cool. And so that's part of why I love my electric yeah. car, because yeah. it's all renewable energy. All renewable. That's so great. I wish that's that pretty could, big. Be, could go all over the state, because it's such a like positive reinforcement yeah. for me as somebody yeah. who contributes to the economy. Sure. 
you know. Right, and wants to make like the right choices for the environment yeah. to know that your electricity is coming from renewable sources. Right. It's a big, that's a big deal. It's a big deal. Yeah. So I don't know, that's a really nice. Yeah, right, like how do we incorporate renewable energy into that conversation? I bet that's a great question. And that river. And that river. Well, I know that, so Washington Electric has uh, a, an electric power plant. Up higher. Up right? higher. Right. Yeah, I mean, I would love to ever see uh, refurbishment of the lane shop stand. Yep. Uh, I mean, that's, 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 that's a big one. That's a big one. And, uh, you know, I don't know what it would take to, to refurbish it, but, you know, I, I, there's got to be some, some grants out there. Oh, I bet. <laughs> right? That probably, I don't know. That's a, that's a, a future conversation, I, I hope. Um, uh, but anyway, uh, so yeah, we're going to be doing uh, a lot of good, a lot of good stuff right there. Well, speaking of rivers, um, m many municipalities don't have any rivers. This is municipalities true. would crave one river, and you've yeah. got we've got five. And we've got five. Yeah. The other point is that the city of eight thousand people. Um, I bet they're doubled this last weekend. You had over <laughs> probably eight thousand. Oh yeah. Explain. I'm gonna. Uh, I, uh, people were all. So there was so much going on in Montpelier. Yes. Yeah, no, there is so much going on in Montpelier. So we have had <coughs> so just some really exciting uh, um, events going on, but also, my, I mean, I've been going, it feels like I've been going from one groundbreaking to a ribbon cutting just since I started, which is uh, just so exciting to see Montpelier uh, ha um, in this place where like a lot of, projects are coming to fruition uh, and there's so much there's so much going on right now so between Caledonia spirits uh, they're uh, you know building uh, there and uh, uh, I believe it's timber homes it's building oh, yeah. a facility out on Elm Street and uh, and then Taylor Street and and you know we we are going to be um, uh, looking at uh, probably uh, very soon uh, a bond vote about the possibility of a parking garage um, mm. that would be I mean it's gonna be a, a public amenity like we we all know that we need more parking in Montpelier uh, and especially you know if businesses want to continue to to thrive and move to Montpelier we they need places to park that's just unfortunately um, I know we have mixed feelings about our cars um, in Montpelier but um, but they need places. They need a place to go um, right now. So, and I would much rather have it all be condensed um, into one place uh, rather than um, you know needing to be spread out along the street throughout the city. <coughs> so, um, uh, if we can, especially if we can open up spaces um, that would be available to customers for um, that could potentially go to to shoppers uh, downtown. That's a, a, a good thing. So. Um, uh, we're going to be looking at uh, using this parking garage to leverage a, a hotel um, downtown, um, which I, th you know, I think is going to be a great addition. Uh, I think it, it's going to bring more conferences and, and uh, more people to downtown as well. Uh, and then, um, you know, thinking about the uh, uh, just the next steps. For that, right? Like, so we we need to have this uh, this bond vote, which is very likely to be in November. So uh, we're gonna have lots of information about that uh, coming up in the papers. So uh, we want to make sure that people are informed about that. But there's there's another thing too. Sorry, I'm, this is a little bit tangential, but j I'm just thinking about things that are gonna be on that um, on that ballot uh, in November. So uh, one possibility is that either in November or in March. Uh, we may be taking up um, uh, a, a charter change. Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see which one it goes on. I'm not sure, it, but it might be on the November um, charter, or I'm sorry, the November ballot, uh, which is uh, around plastic bags. So have you have you heard of the, this uh, this deal with plastic bags? No. Okay. So. Uh, you might have heard that uh, there are many communities around the country that have uh, banned plastic bags or they tax oh. plastic bags or they have a fee uh, per bag or something like that. Um, and I think, you know, we would like to explore um, doing something like that. You know, if we can be incentivizing uh, people to be bringing bags and not 
um, using single use plastic, that is all the better, right? Because that, that does not, it, it effectively does not decompose mm -hmm. um, in landfills or anywhere else, uh, which is, uh, that's a huge problem uh, worldwide. So I know that the problem of plastics is daunting, uh, but you know, any step that we can be taking, I think, is a, is a good thing. Uh, so uh, in order for us to do that, though, to, to either think about a ban or um, some kind of a fee, uh, either way, um, we, so we need to amend our charter in order to be able to do that. Uh, and so the, the language that we're going to be looking at pretty soon um, addresses what would, would allow us to um, have an ordinance about plastic bags. But it's also pretty broad. Um, it also has to do with sustainability and um, energy efficiency and renewable energy. So mm -hmm. um, it's uh, we thought there there might be a lot uh, there that we we might we could imagine you know um, having uh, ordinances about uh, you know even in terms of thinking about our zoning if we have a minimum building energy code uh, you know what is that sitting on right like if we don't have jurisdiction to uh, to have ordinances or zoning about um, about energy, then this is, in a certain sense, um, covering our butts, you know, as they say, right? To to make sure that it's um, uh, uh, supported by our charter language. So mm -hmm. that's there's and th there's other there's other things too. I mean, we're we're talking about compost and um, anyway, lots of other stuff. But um, uh, so anyway, that's going to be coming up. Um, Pretty soon. Now, charter changes go before the legislature. They do yeah. yeah. So that language will need to pass the council and the um, uh, the public, and then uh, it'll go to the, the legislature for approval as well. And we'll see. I mean, I I don't know if they'll if I, they'll go for it, but I, <laughs> I, I hope think so. The, the legislature generally is supportive of municipalities yes, that want to have a charter. They, change. Yes, yeah. they they certainly have been. So you had so many people in the last. Uh, four or five days, and a bunch of people say to you about the city, their, their, their perceptions of the city have been, never been here before. Yes, so I have heard uh, from, from people that they are just amazed at the city of Montpelier. They're like, how did you, you know, how did you keep uh, Montpelier uh, so, so beautiful and like with all, the, all these archi um, historic uh, architectural buildings uh, intact? And you know, I think it's we really have had um, great. We've I think we've uh, we've had some uh, really good processes around our design review committee and the uh, the development review board, and um, it really is it really is a special place. I was uh, just the other day hearing from someone from our the historic preservation committee um, who says that uh, you know people come to Montpelier and they are just. Um, who under who understand you know historic preservation and they are just so jealous our of, of our architecture of what yeah. we have here. I mean, we really have preserved uh, buildings uh, in a, in such a beautiful way. So and so much of our our downtown uh, are historic buildings, um, and I you know I think that's that's really important. And, and from an energy perspective, I mean all, that's a lot of embodied energy that those buildings represent. So I'm, I'm just so, um, gosh, I feel so lucky to be the mayor of such a wonderful place. <laughs> and the New England States will be visiting Montpelier in yes. the next few weeks. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, about yeah, that. Yeah, so Montpelier just uh, was, um, uh, I guess I'm not sure what the right word is, uh, awarded, uh, designated as yeah. going to be the location yeah. for uh, th an upcoming, uh, basically a, like a creative economies um, uh, conference. That's going to be in 2019. So uh, I believe it's the New England Foundation of the Arts uh, mm -hmm. sponsors this conference. That's the Creative Communities Exchange, and uh, as as I hear, uh, it's a it's a pretty big conference. And so a lot of uh, you know creative folks uh, in that world are going to be coming to Montpelier. And uh, you know so much thanks to you know the Center for Arts and Learning and the T.W. Wood Gallery and. Uh, you know the Vermont Humanities Council and uh, the uh, you know the the Vermont College of Fine Arts and gosh I'm gonna I'm gonna not gonna be able to list all of the the people that help make that happen but they're um, 
uh, it's just it's so exciting to to have such a big conference coming here next year. So yeah, and I know soon we're going to be taking up a conversation about the the um, uh, master plan for arts for the city. So that's going to be an upcoming dialogue. One of the joys of serving in the legislature was uh, being part of the committee where you uh, find out what's going on in other cities and learning from other cities mm -hmm. and towns. And so uh, that that would be really remarkable. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's so helpful to have connections across municipalities, even in uh, other states, uh, just to know like this is how other people are um, solving the problems that are common to cities. I mean, we're all most cities are dealing with the same kinds of problems, you know, opiates, well, lack of housing or lack of affordable housing. And um, is the yeah. sorry, is the Council okay. of State Governments part of that conglomerate? Um, oh, that's bringing that conference. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't think so, but um, I could. Bill be was part I'll, of them. Uh, I've been. In, oh, really? I'll be in touch with them, and uh, that was a joy mm -hmm. to be part of that committee. Yeah. Oh, that's so wonderful. And I, I'll be talking to them before they come. Oh, that's great. That's and great. Give them the briefing. That's so, awesome. Uh, excellent. Any, any, any other questions or discussions? Well, I'm wondering if she has another question, right here that we should ask. I was a strong mayor, whatever you're a strong mayor, political scientists did divide <laughs> cities and strong mayor and weak mayor. Yes, and take, sure. Take us, take us through that terminology. Yeah, sure. So uh, Montpelier has a weak mayor form of government, uh, local government. Uh, it isn't necessarily bad because No, it's, it's not, you're right, it's not necessarily bad. Um, it's just a, a different, uh, it's just a, a, a kind of setup um, uh, for the way things work. So uh, in a strong mayor form of government, it's the, the mayor who uh, is, has a full-time job with the city and they are making decisions about initiatives and uh, uh, they have the ability to hire and fire staff and they're managing the day-to-day -day operations um, of the city. So, like, example, Burlington, Burlington. Rutland, Brattleboro? Um, I don't think Brattleboro has okay. a strong mayor form of government, but, um, but, but Rutland and Burlington Rutland. both So do. it's population-based? Well, uh, as I hear, um, having a larger population does lend itself um, more easily to having a strong mayor form of government. Okay. <clears throat> um, and uh, there are only eight uh, official cities in Vermont, and so two out of the eight have strong mayor um, um, systems, and the others have weak mayor systems or um, council manager kind of um, systems. So the um, well, maybe maybe that's different. Anyway, I shouldn't confuse those things. Uh, so uh, for Montpelier, I mean, we have a, a city manager who is the person who is uh, you know hiring and firing, evaluating uh, city staff. Uh, and then, uh, you know, they, he's running the day-to-day -day operations of the city. And that's um, Mr. Odom. Oh, nope, that oh. is uh, Bill Frazier. Oh, Mr. Frazier. Right? Yep, okay. yep. Uh, and then uh, the council, uh, including the mayor, uh, has one employee, and that is the city manager. Oh. So, uh, you know, we, so we manage the, the city manager. Uh, and so, uh, otherwise, uh, the, the council is a, a policy-making body. Um, and so we're, we might be setting the vision, the direction, um, the policies for the city, and then it's up to the city manager and the city staff to carry that out. Implement. Yeah, to implement. Um, but with a strong mayor form of government, it's that, it's the, the, uh, that mayor who is uh, m more vision-setting um, for, the, for the city. Uh, so and so as as we are right now, I mean, as the this mayor of Montpelier, it means that uh, I am the um, more or less the facilitator of the council. So I run council meetings, um, but then I think in our charter it also says something about being a figurehead for the city. It so doesn't uh, say figurehead, does it? I I, might, I think it might actually. <laughs> we'll but have to work um, on the yeah right. Bust. Exactly. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the so, last thing you want to be called. Oh, I know, right? Well, and. Like I get it, you know. I'm I'm happy to to you know talk to the press and Way to, to choose. <laughs> uh, yeah, to represent. Like it's it's fine and um and it's fun even. But 
Uh, but it also means that I have another job. <laughs> so whereas like the mayor of Rutland or of Burlington, uh, you know, that's their full-time, their full, yes. uh, yeah, their full-time job. Um, for the mayors in the other cities um, who are, are weak mayors, uh, uh, we, you know, we, have, we have other jobs. Right. So well, it's been a great interview. Is there anything you'd like to add that you, you'd like before we, we close oh, the program? Oh, gosh. Well, I just want to, uh, well, actually, we just had a, a um, primary yesterday, and we had such great turnout um, for that. And uh, I, that was the first time I'd ever had to wait in line to vote, and I'm just so I'm just so proud of us <laughs> for for getting out to vote, and I, I hope that people will also turn out in November uh, to to continue to to do their civic duty. <laughs> Come out vote. <laughs> you talking me on the shoulder? I was saying, well, thanks for the primary opportunity. Yeah. Phil. Wasn't that something you had something to do with? Right, well, I, they, they was the, it was the, the, the whole legislature had to vote on it, uh, but it did increase it, the participation of people in the process. Oh, good. Yeah. Wow. What and year was that, Bill? Do you remember? I'd say 15 years ago. No, oh, I think it was longer than that, wasn't it? It was when you okay, first became uh, let's make it active. 20, let's make it 20 years. <laughs> yeah, we'll say 20. But there you go. There Bill you go. helped implement that Vermonters could participate in the primaries. Before oh, wow. he um, introduced that bill, Vermonters were not allowed to participate in primaries. You had, oh to, say, you had to say your party before you voted. Oh, wow. Yeah, no. Yeah, we handed people, you know, three ballots, and they could choose privately which one they they wanted to right. use. That that was you. Thank well, you so much. Well, a lot of other communities have the open primary, and I think it just it, it allows people more participation. No, I agree. I agree. That's great. Um, it's, it's been wonderful visiting with you. Uh, any final comment? Well, Nothing. I want to commend Anne on her um, real dedication to Montpelier. It's a small quirky community and it has a lot of energy th flowing through it all the time and ideas and people and it's yeah. a big responsibility and I yeah. commend you on taking it on well thank you and <laughs> trying to be as progressive as this community tries to be that's yeah. really great yeah for sure you can be very so proud of being you. the mayor of this city yes I sure am I'm and so you get, grateful you, you get the final comment oh gosh uh, well just thank you for for having me it's always just such a delight to, to come here and talk with you. Yeah. Well, well, thank, thank you for coming. Thanks yeah. for the great job that for you're sure. doing. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Yay. Yay.